Welcome to Digital Asset News, the like top stories in crypto, and break them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some honestly crazy stories. Uh, first, we're gonna talk about Visa getting into the NFT game. Uh, we're gonna take a look at a little crypto history to see kind of like where we are at right now and how we were back just, just four years ago. Also, we're gonna take a look at how a poly network hacker is giving back everything and the reasoning behind it. I think it's a little bit of a twist. And last, we're gonna go over a Q of the day. We're gonna talk about loans, crypto loans, and how that all works out. So we'll go over all that stuff. But first, let's take a look what's going on into the market. So today, hey, another great day. It is a Monday, I think it's the 23rd. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's 23rd. Uh, 2.14 trillion, 2.14 trillion market cap. That's pretty darn good. We have just been going up. And uh, I will just warn everybody right now, you can't go up forever. What goes up will eventually come down. So just expect for a pullback at some point. You just can't keep going doing this. Although I did say that last week and uh, market uh, overperformed in my opinion. So uh, who knows? But uh, I just want everybody just to be a little bit of, uh, aware. And we're looking at Bitcoin prices looking pretty good. Uh, looks like, I mean, as far as the sentiment analysis for today, everybody's bullish. I mean, 65 out of 100. I mean, that's pretty good as far as like sentiment analysis. And if, if you're wondering what I'm using, it's called Trade the Chain. It's uh, just for sentiment analysis. And we can take a look at uh, everything as far as like what's going on, as far as which ones are, are the good, good sentiment for the day. So like Bitcoin's at 49.4. Uh, you're looking at, uh, uh, for as far as daily sentiment, bullish, 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 except for Tether, bearish. I don't see how that works out, but sure. Uh, XRP is neutral. I'm, bear I'm bullish on XRP, Dogecoin. And uh, of course, the darling of the hour, Cardano. Congratulations to all you Cardano holders, myself included. Um, it's been a magnificent run. And we'll see what happens when uh, all those smart contracts go online. And uh, if it can do what it says it, it uh, can do. And uh, I'm waiting for that. Uh, day to happen. So let's see it all works out. That's what's going on in the market. Everything's going great. Everything's going good. Just be cautious. That's the only thing I can say. Let's go over the first story, <clears throat> which is just crazy. Visa <laughs> Visa buys an, an, uh, CryptoPunks NFT for roughly 50 Ether. That's insane. So I'll just go over this real quick. Visa's official news-based Twitter account told it's 114,000 followers. Isn't that crazy? It's only got 114,000 followers, Visa. It's a pretty big company. I guess they're not, in the, maybe their Twitter game is weak, just like mine, whatever. Uh, but it paid about 50 Ether for CryptoPunk 7610. So we did a video yesterday where we talked about this. We talked about how, you know, NFTs is the next gold rush. And uh, some people will say it could be a fad. Some people say it's a bubble. And some people say it's here to stay. I don't know what it is, but I can tell you right now, there's a lot of things going on and people are making quite a bit of money. And on this channel, I cannot give you financial advice. I'm not a financial planner or analyst or anything like that. It's just a financial opinion. And I'm not telling you to get into uh, crypto punks, but I just find it interesting that Visa, first of all, they got into a partnership with Circle to bring USDC, the stable coin, into its into its system, into its network, business worldwide. And then it goes on and says, you know what, what we're going to do? We're going to buy uh, CryptoPunks. We're going to buy an NFT. And it states like this. And so don't be alarmed when you hear this. You're like, oh, Visa is going to just scoop up all the NFTs. No, it's not what's happening. Over the last 60 years, Visa has built a collection of historic commerce artifacts from early paper credit cards, the Zip Zap machine. I don't even know what that is. Today, as we enter a new era of NFT commerce, Visa welcomes CryptoPunk 7610 to our collection. Regardless of what's going on, maybe it's just a collector's item, whatever they want to call it. But uh, in all honesty, Visa is pretty heavy into crypto. And when they get into something like an NFT, maybe it's uh, something to look at a little bit harder. Now, on this channel, I'm not the most well-versed as far as NFTs and things like that. Go follow Crypto Stash, and there's a, a bunch of different... Uh, uh, Twitter accounts you can follow. Uh, NFT Today is one I just uh, started following. They got a lot of great uh, insights. Go look at Alex Becker. He's big in NFTs and stuff like that. But uh, also, <clears throat> before I forget, is that uh, the gentleman over at Cardano Combat, they sold out their NFTs, which is based on the Cardano blockchain, uh, within two hours. And because of that, I was like, well, that's a bummer. But they reached out to me and they go, hey, we set aside one for you. Do you want to give one away? I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, people like free stuff. Who doesn't like free stuff? So it's the Golden Ouroboros. All you got to do is uh, go to my Twitter account. You can see it right down there, uh, at News Asset. Follow me and follow uh, at Cardano Combat. And uh, just uh, on the very first, first post, which is pinned, is the giveaway. So everybody that's in this and they comment and they follow and all this stuff, I'll draw that tomorrow. And someone's going to win. 
uh, this little beauty, which who knows, could be worth 10 cents, could be worth 10 million, I have no idea. Nobody knows NFTs, right? So that's what's going on there. Now what I wanna do is just take a look about a little crypto history. Uh, because I know people, when they look at things, they're like, it doesn't make any sense. This doesn't really, because I mean, we're gonna go up forever, or uh, you know, these, we're, we're gonna go sideways, we're gonna do whatever. This I just wanna show you is all the way back from early 2017 to today. And as you can see it right here, uh, you can't see my mouse, that's a bummer. But uh, see that, that little blip where it says 2018 right above it? That was the last bull run. And that was when everything went bonkers. Isn't that crazy? When we hit a, a whopping 19,000 Bitcoin. Watch out, 19,000 Bitcoin. That's, that's laughable now these days. And then of course, on the right-hand side, above 2021, we see where we hit the all-time high around 64,000. But what I wanna show you real quick is that if you take a look at this little piece, see this little piece right before 2018 hit, when we had like this all-time high, see this stuff right here? This doesn't look like much of anything, right? Well, this was around, if you just take a look at May 2017, again, four-year cycles, which I always talk about on this show. Some people don't believe in them anymore. I still believe in them, especially after we just had a halving in 2020. So take a look at this price, $1,700 for Bitcoin. And then it kind of went up a little bit and everybody's like, this is awesome. And imagine, imagine going from 1,700 to 2,200. You probably were like the genius, right? Then you're going up 22,900. You're like, ah, this is great. And then all of a sudden it starts to slide down. Like what happened? What's going on? Then before you know it, you're back down to essentially the same thing in July. So over here, and he goes up to here, you're a genius in just like a month. Then it goes all the way back down, just like what we saw recently in around April, May, when it went to, to its all-time high and it, and it crashed down. But here's another thing. After July, just like how we're seeing it now, didn't we see a little bit of a rally? Well, we saw a rally, we saw a rally back then. So now you're looking at 1st of August, all the way to $2,700, 3500 4200 and over here, you were a genius at $4,800. And then, and I'm not even gonna call it a crash, which sounds ridiculous if you look at this, right? But look at this, we were down to 3,100. So right up here at $4,800, down to 3,100, everybody was calling these people morons. You're an idiot for not selling. You should have blah, 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 right? But then people who believe were like, ah, you just wait. You just wait. And again, what, when was this? September. And people are calling for a pullback when? In September. Amazing how that all works out. And then all of a sudden, a little bit of a rally. Now we're at 4,000, back to where we were before. And then we go way up all the way to $7,400. And again, you're a genius. But then it drops down again to 5,800. And of course, the same naysayers. You're an idiot. You're a moron. You should have sold. You're so dumb. And then before you know it, people are like, we'll see. And then it did this. So <clears throat> again, when we take a look at all this stuff that's happening right now, this is just from, from June. Look at this, this craziness that's going on right now. All we really got to do is just zoom out and look at the big picture. The big picture is things are going to go sideways. They're going to go up and down. But for this market and where we're going, I think we're heading in a pretty good direction as far as cryptos and digital assets. And uh, I'm just a long-term investor. Maybe that'd be something good for you. Anyhow, I just want to share with that. Tell me what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our second to last piece, the Poly Network Hacker. <laughs> this is actually funny. So if you don't remember, Poly Network, not Polygon, Poly Network, it got, uh, not busted, it got hacked for $610 million worth of crypto. That's a bummer. And just one person, apparently, one hacker. And then, so they were gonna shut down, but then all of a sudden they had a dialogue with the person that actually did some hacker and they offered him a $500,000 bug bounty. So just return our stuff, we'll give you a half a million. This guy's got 610 million. He's like, no, but I'll return it at some point. And you know what he did? He returned everything. He returned everything uh, just a couple of days ago or just yesterday, I think it was. And he, he'd, he had been slowly, slowly uh, uh, returning everything. So when I read this, I'm like, that's sweet. Isn't that nice? There's a hacker with a heart out there. Fantastic. But you got to remember this. There's always two sides to a story. Some believe that the hacker became a white hat out of fear of being caught. Blockchain security firm Slow Mist announced that it had managed to get the stackers, attacker's IP, email, <laughs> and device fingerprints. So at first, when you see stuff like this, you're like, 
That's pretty good. That's pretty great. See, we're all going to be safe. I think, honestly, the only reason, well, part of the reason is probably because this guy got caught and then off you go. Let me know what you think about that in the comments and where you think this is going. I've got another great story from Alex Dobnia. And uh, let's move on to our last piece. This might take a little bit of time. We're going to talk about the cue of the day. And this is from Shane. And I had been talking about uh, crypto loans because I take on a crypto loan with Celsius. I put up collateral for my Bitcoin. Didn't sell my Bitcoin. And what's great about not selling your Bitcoin is not, it's not a taxable event. Loans are not taxable. So Shane says, hey, Rob, thanks for your great video. In the latest video, we talk about buy a borrow die strategy. This was actually Sheehan Chandrasekhar, my friend, CP, uh, certified CPA. He said it was the buy a borrow die strategy. It's pretty good. He goes, I know he can't offer financial advice. True, but here's a question. I don't have a ton of crypto. So if I take out a loan at the peak this year, and this is the, this is the crux. If I take out a loan at the peak this year, then the Bitcoin price tanks by 75% the next month, the loan company is going to want more crypto from me to cover their loss. Yes. So it seems like I can only put up half of my crypto for the loan to account for this possibility. So here's the thing. I just got to tell you right now, um, if you don't feel comfortable with this, then, then don't do it. I can't tell you what to do. My goals are not your goals, right? So you have to remember, if you're going to take out a loan for your crypto, you better make sure that that money's working for you. And uh, that's just, if I had to tell myself that, that's what I would say, right? I am not going to take a loan out to buy a stupid car that is going to just depreciate. I'm going to, the reason why I took out these loans was to put a massive down payment on a condo uh, that was being rented on Airbnb for short-term rentals and it was rental 24-7, 365. So it was an appreciating asset, one, and it actually gave me passive income. Well, kind of passive income, two. So if you're gonna do anything with these types of funds and, and, and loans, you better make sure they are appreciating. That is the big thing. So if you're gonna take a loan, don't, like, oh, I'm just going to blow it on stupid stuff or I'm going to blow it on uh, whatever the, the things that you need. Now, if you need like other things like, hey, I need like surgery or, you know, medical condition. Yes, of course. Take it out. Right. St don't be like those those stupid diamond hands. I'm, I'm going to hold on forever. Stuff like that. If you got a self to help out your family, you do that. So it's all up to you. So the thing is, though, is that with this loan, you have to take a look at the fine print because, uh, when I put up my Bitcoin, there's the different interest rates, right? So you have, uh, if you put up just twice or double the, the loan amount, your interest rate is like 7%, 7% uh, um, interest. And then if it's like uh, triple, it goes down to like 3%, somewhere around there. And, and Celsius always does different things and other ones do different things. And if you quadruple uh, the amount that you need, um, in your Bitcoin or whatever crypto, it's only 1%. So if you need, 10,000, okay, you say, okay, here's 20,000 worth of crypto, great, you're gonna have a 7% interest rate. If you say, uh, well, I need 10,000, well, here's 30,000 worth of crypto, it's gonna be 3%. You say, I need 10,000, and you give them $40,000 worth of crypto, it's 1%. Now, here's the thing, though. Uh, at that point, uh, that crypto is volatile, right? So if it falls past a certain point, like for me, when I put this in, I think Bitcoin was around... I want to say 55, 56,000. They said, look, we're going to call this in or you're going to have to give us more crypto if it goes up, if, if the value goes down below $19,000. I'm like, well, that's probably not going to happen. So I think I should be okay. Either you have to pay off the loan or you have to give us more crypto. So just be aware of those things. So just like Shane says, if I'm going to, at the top, hopefully he doesn't get a loan at the top for whatever else it is that he needs then yeah, he's going to probably have to get more, more crypto. And then to move on in this one, in a different video by Mark Moss, he talks about how each year you take out a new crypto loan to pay off the old loan and keep the surplus gain to live on. He didn't talk about this and uh, had a question about that. So I'll just say like this, uh, on that situation, I wouldn't recommend to do that. I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess you can, but it's, it's the same type of thing, right? If you're just taking all that out and you're living on that, well, what happens if there is a black swan event, what happens if another uh, pandemic comes along? I don't care if you believe in it or not, uh, it still affects the market. So if it affects the markets and you're gonna get called in for that loan, do you have enough to cover that loan either in cash or in cryptocurrency? So that's one of those things. 
And uh, that's just uh, what I got for, for that one. So yeah, so hopefully that answers that, that your question about, uh, about that as far as loans. You got to be careful, make sure they're appreciating assets. And that is the big stuff. So look, that is it for today. So hey, if you uh, stuck with me all the way in, I would appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with me. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. All the things we talk about are very time sensitive and things we talk about on this channel. Uh, consider uh, signing up and that's it for today. So thanks so much. See you on the next one.